departed south of uh, Bermuda, we continued on southeast. We've been very flexible as far as the route is concerned uh, due to where the biomass is located. So present time, we're uh, approximately uh, 145 miles north of uh, Barbados and continuing on. Great, uh, could you give us a little bit more weight? The Oceanus is a special ship to sail on because they're just really wonderful about supporting the science and anything we need or help we need, they're always right there. So it's really fun to see it all coming together. Our operation has been great so far and we're starting now to get into some really interesting areas of plankton. We're finding more and more trichodesmium the further south we go and getting all of the data coming in just the way we want it. Uh, yeah, we had a good amount of trichodesmin uh, in the net tow at 70 meters and also another good amount uh, at 10 meters just below the surface. Uh, we're picking trichodesmin. They're hard to see, but they're those little puff balls there. We're hoping we have some, but we're hoping for much more than that. collecting trichodesmium colonies now with a mock nest started out at the surface and lowered the net system down to 40 meters where we're taking our deepest sample, bring them up to the surface and, uh, and then put them in the incubator that simulates the precise light environment that they were in when they were down 40 meters below the surface. And then the nitrogen fixation rate is measured. These are the puffs here and then these here, the long thin ones, are the rafts. The hypothesis is that the colonies that are down deep here are still uh, actively fixing nitrogen. That's really uh, one of the two most important objectives of the entire cruise, to see if these colonies down here are active. Phytoplankton are algae that carry out the process of photosynthesis, using light energy from the sun to transform carbon dioxide and water into organic material, in doing so producing oxygen. The organic material produced in this process forms the basis of the marine food chain and also provides fuel for the biological pump that transports carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the deep sea. Photosynthesis also requires nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphorus. Phytoplankton obtain these nutrients from their environment. Over large areas of the world ocean, these nutrients are depleted in surface waters because they have been removed by photosynthesis. Consequently, phytoplankton are often nutrient limited, relying on the upward transport of nutrients to sustain their productivity. Trichodesmium is a very special variety of phytoplankton that has the ability to break the strong chemical bond between the two nitrogen molecules in dinitrogen gas, which is readily available in the dissolved form, owing to the fact that nitrogen is the most abundant molecule in our atmosphere. Of course, the very next question is how trichodesmium obtains the phosphorus it needs, and that is a primary research objective of Dr. Dyerman. So the big mystery, really, that we're trying to solve with this cruise is trying to assay those subsurface nitrogen fixation rates from the trichodesmium. So we've been using the video plankton recorder and mock nest to sample those subsurface populations. And then my team has been involved with picking out those little trichodesmium colonies from those samples. We put them in bottles, we spike them with a particular gas that we use in our assay, and we actually look at how much nitrogen they're drawing out of the atmosphere, how much nitrogen they're fixing in those colonies that we've taken straight out of the oceans. There is a third flavor of things that we're doing, and that is more water column chemistry analysis. So here again, we take a different CTD cast, and we pull water from each of those different bottles, and we're filtering out all of the particulate matter, and we're saving the water 
frozen and specially cleaned with acid bottles that we're going to take back to the laboratory and use to measure the concentration of nutrients in the water so that we have a, a greater understanding of what the chemical environment is for these different trichodesmian populations. And we're also preserving samples very rapidly into liquid nitrogen to freeze those samples and preserve the RNA signal to basically look for the genetic signature of different trichodesmium species throughout the water column. A little coachy discussion about where we were going to fish. My job on the cruise is simply get representative cultures from the cruise that we're on, get those into culture so that they'll be available for our colleagues to study in the future. Well, I think one doesn't learn about microorganisms simply by working in a laboratory. Uh, one of my colleagues at MIT always says, let the organisms tell you about themselves. Where you find them in the field, what they're doing, you can get a really good sense of how their biology works. And then can go back into the laboratory and verify those sorts of things. These are images that we've captured with this system. Each of these little filaments here is a tricolon. Trichodesmium forms these colonies and these bundles are bundles of trichomes. Oh, we're gonna do another termination on the uh, VPR. Get back to doing science. Well, we put the tow fish in the water and the data's coming up through the fiber optic tow cable into the uh, acquisition system on the ship. This is the flight control screen here. This is the view that you would get if you were sitting inside the tow fish looking out, flying it like an airplane. This flight control program allows us to undulate the instrument between the surface and 150 meters. On this cruise, we've been getting about three TIFF images per second. So all of these are little pictures of the plankton that get written to the disks in real time. We have another computer over here that is reading the disk, loading in these images, and we programmed it so that it processes the images, identifies what they are, and plots their distribution patterns as we're towing. A little change in plans. Yeah, there's a, a very nice uh, anti-cyclone uh, just to our south that has uh, intensified recently, according to the satellite altimetry. And it uh, looks like it's just, yeah, just east of Guadalupe. Probably within a day, we can be there by tomorrow, I think. Last night we were sampling a cyclonic eddy. In fact, I've got a picture of it right here. Uh, a cyclonic eddy that was uh, first identified by satellite data. Then we oriented our cruise track with the, the VPR and you can see the velocity vectors from the ship's acoustic Doppler current profiler showing the cyclonic rotation. There we have it. 215 miles. Right, so we won't, won't be able to make it quite to the center by morning but we'll be well inside the feature, have a general idea of its characteristics, and if it's promising, we'd probably stay for a, at least another day and make a detailed survey of that, and uh, we've got plenty to look at, absolutely. Having the capability to adaptively sample the ocean uh, with satellite tools, uh, with the TOAD VPR, and together with the CTD and the Mach Ness, it's a, a very nice combination to, uh, to sample the ocean where the action is. Thank you.